Hey guys, welcome back to the Cast of Spirit podcast. My name is John, and today we have back on the show Brian Fern, aka Uncle Learn You How on Instagram and all over the internet. Today we are going to be talking about properly caring for your catch. Welcome back to the show, Brian. Thanks, John. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So I want to first talk about scrombroid, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, poisoning. I hear it's pretty nasty. What is it? So scrombroid, fish poisoning, happens when you poorly care for your catch. What does a poorly cared for catch looks like? Well, you shoot your fish. Maybe you leave it on your waist for too long. You had it on the deck of the boat the deck of the kayak, maybe you brought a cooler, but you didn't have enough ice in there. If that fish is allowed to stay too warm for a period of a few hours, it causes scombroid. Now, scombroid mimics an allergic reaction. If you guys have ever had an allergic reaction where you got a rash, you got all flush in the face, Maybe you got a little bit of nauseous, little GI symptoms, some vomiting, some diarrhea. Scombroid actually mimics a severe allergic reaction, and it can be quite concerning. It can easily be avoided by caring for your catch properly. So that being said, if you're going to be out on a kayak or a boat, make sure you have enough ice. You know, if we're going to go out fishing for ahi, we're going to have at least two pounds of ice per one pound of fish, you know? But ahi is a very hard running species. They get their, themselves very, very hot. You know, you don't need that much ice for other species, but you wanna have enough on board to at least cover the catch, right? You wanna be able to sufficiently ice them down. Once you get home, I like to create a brine with just some simple, very inexpensive table salt. Get your fish in your cooler, get your layer of ice, and you just go back and forth with the salt. It creates a nice layer. What that does is it actually hardens the ice and makes it a lot colder. And that will actually keep your ice longer. Now, some people are worried about, well, I don't want my fish in that cooler water, right? Because that's fresh water. People have this conception that it's going to taint the fish. Well, if your fish is still intact, you know, like you didn't do a shot through the body, it's not really going to reach there. Even if you've cleaned out the gut cavity, that's a separate compartment altogether. So that would be more of a concern if you did like a through body shot. And if that were the case, easily avoid that by putting the fish on top of the ice and draining your cooler so that fresh water doesn't build up. When you were talking about the scombroid, is there any way that it can be like gotten rid of or is it like permeates the entire flesh of the meat? Like say I was on the kayak the other day and we didn't bring ice. I didn't leave the fish in the water. It was pretty warm. Um, you know, is it just like, oh, that's too much of a risk. I should throw that fish away. Or is there anything that can be done? Well, if you're not keeping it properly, there's not really any way around that. Right. So if you don't have ice, the best thing you could do is try to leave the fish at least in the water, right? But if you have it in the compartment of your kayak, it's going to get very hot in there. It's an enclosed space. You don't want to leave it on the deck. Sometimes people without enough ice will take maybe a towel or like their shirt, their rash guard, soak that, at least wrap the fish in that and continue to saturate that with cool water. That's one thing you can do. But just keep in mind, the longer that fish is out of ideal chilled conditions, the greater the risk becomes. Now, if you do get scombroid, the treatment for that's relatively simple. You want to take an antihistamine like Benadryl, which everybody's pretty familiar with. And you also want to flush your system with as much water as you can because you're trying to flush that toxin out of your system. So is an actual toxin created by like bacteria or like what, what makes it? Uh, it it just kind of turns the fish, you know, so it becomes a toxin that it builds up in the fish because of the heat that is allowed in the flesh. And then you're saying for the cooler, you know, you don't. Some people don't want the fresh water to kind of soak over the fish. Do you leave your drain plug open and just let the ice as it melts to kind of go out, or or not? 
You certainly can. I would, like I say, I would be more concerned with that if the if the body of the fish were open. But for the most part, you know, if my fish are intact, I'm not too concerned with it. I'll usually check a cooler maybe twice a day just to check the ice stock. If there's a lot of water, I'll then drain it. Some people are super OCD about it and they want to leave their cooler drains open the whole time, which is perfectly fine to do as well. But like I say, you can always put the fish on top of the ice, right? The cooler, whether the fish is under the ice or over the ice, it's still cold in the cooler. Right. And then how long are you able to leave the fish in the ice or on top of it before you want to take it out and start cooking? If I know I'm going to prepare fish the following day, I like to leave it on ice for at least 24 hours. You know, you don't have to, but the thing to consider with the quality of the meat, you know, you, you can get really into it and do the ikajime style where you point right into the brain and then you send a wire down the spine to fire off all the nerves. You know, that will take it through rigor. Keeping it on ice, properly bleeding the catch, you know, if the belly cavity got open, just remove the contents of that so it doesn't taint it with via smell. These are all ways to preserve the quality of your meat. I would prefer to leave a fish in the cooler intact for, say, two to three days, more so than I would just to ice it briefly, fillet it, and leave those fillets in the fridge. I feel like having the scales on, the skin, that's going to be a better preservant of the meat than it will just being open in the refrigerator. Absolutely. And then once you take it out, do you ever freeze your fish? Do you ever fillet and put it in the freezer? Or is it always try to just take what you need for that next cooking session? I, I try really hard not to freeze fish. If I have an abundance of fish, I would rather give it away than freeze it. And I know that's not an option for some people. Maybe they live inland and they only get to the ocean infrequently. Then, you know, by all means, but, you know, there's better methods, right? So flash freezing is going to be the best, followed by vacuum sealing, you know. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to just uh, throw it in a bag, twist, tie it, and throw it in the freezer. It's more than likely to get a freezer burn, and then it's going to graduate from human consumption to fish consumption on the next dive. Is that something that you generally do if you do find that some fish went bad, use it as chum? Is that pretty effective? Oh, definitely. Like if, you know, if you look at the fish and you're ready to eat it, it just doesn't smell right, better to err on the side of caution and uh, either bury it in the garden or use it on your next outing. And then just to wrap this episode up, I know you're pretty prolific in the gyotaku, um, kind of respecting the catch that way by taking up an ink print of it. What led you to try, start trying that? And do you have any tips for the guys who might be interested in it? Sure. For, for your, Giltaku, if you research the history of it, it's what they used to do um, older Japanese times to record the catch. So some people look at it from a traditional stance where it's just a transfer of the fish onto either rice paper. I like to use either canvas or muslin personally. But some guys will actually try to do very detailed replications of the fish. You know, whereas to me, it's like, I just take a digital picture and blow it up if that was the case. But in the realm of gyotaku, you, some of the tips that I've learned along the way is clean all the slime off your fish before you try to print it. And using a brush is what I started with, but then I found it can create streaks in the fish. You can have too much paint. You want to be quick about it because the longer that fish sits out, it's going to start to condensate and that's going to make your ink run. So these days I like to use just a little sponge, which I dab in the ink and just dab along the fish. And I try to be efficient about it because once it starts to condensate, not only am I making it more difficult to get a clean transfer, but my fish is sitting out for longer than I'd like it to. Right. So that whole process, I try to do it quickly. Can you eat the fish after you gyutaku? Definitely, because you're using a, a water-based acrylic ink, and the fish is completely intact. So easily washes off with a hose. You're going to scale more than likely, fillet the skin off that fish anyway. It never gets to the meat. 
So as long as you're not taking an hour or two to print that fish and it's being left out for that long, it's perfectly fine to eat. Perfect. Is there anything else that we want to cover with caring for your catch? Uh, I think just being aware, you know, being aware that that fish can't sit out. It's like any other perishable item, you know, milk, what have you. You wouldn't leave dairy out on the porch in the direct sun for hours and expect it to still be good, right? So the same holds true for any fish. And as you just said, respecting your catch, right? If you're going to go and take a life, you should respect that because that's going to sustain you. You can use it in so many ways. You know, you can use the guts for your next fishing expedition. You can bury the heads and the bones in the garden if you want to. If you want to preserve it, you can take nice pictures with it. You can do a gyotaku print with it. You know, but it's just the, the fact that you respected the catch. You used it to its utmost. You didn't waste it. Perfect. I think that's a great place to stop. If you guys want to say hi to Brian, hit him up on Instagram at Uncle Learn You How. I'll put how to spell that in the show notes. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about something super important, sustainability. So until next time, dive safe, and we'll see you on the next one. Hello, guys.